when you have a lot of people selling just clothing, that makes it very difficult to pay to be competitive. So what's the verdict? What's our verdict? Hi, I'm Camilla. And I'm Kang. And we are the, the Fire Resellers. Resellers. And we are back with a wet sold video. So we're a little off our game, but this week we are going to share three weeks of numbers. We also had a garage sale in the midst of this, and there are lots of exciting things happening on the different platforms that we sell on. So we're gonna talk about Poshmark's promoted closets in this video. Our thoughts, you know, are we a part of it? All of that, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So you wanna stay tuned to the end when we do that, but you can also, you know, look at the chapters and go to that if you wanna watch that first before you see what's sold. But these are some great sales from these past few weeks. So we have a Patagonia backpack here, and this one I picked up out of the bins. Someone else had actually originally picked it up, and they put it back down, and as soon as their hand left that backpack, I picked it right back up. And this sold for $59 on Poshmark. This is the style, it's the Chaka Buko backpack, and so it says it right there, which makes it super easy to list. You know, we know exactly what we had, and this looks like it's a little bit more like camping, hiking, than just like a regular backpack. And so we put that in the listing and it sold very quickly. So definitely be on the lookout for backpacks. Don't discount them. A lot of times at the bins, in the bag, you know, bin with all the purses and stuff, a lot of people do not look at the backpacks as much. Like they'll look for the purses and we don't really look at purses that much because that's not our, you know, forte, but We'll go in, you know, in that second round and pick up the backpacks. And we have had pretty good luck with the backpacks that we've picked up. Here we've got some Nike Air Jordan 4s and they are in pretty decent shape. Definitely used. Got it at a garage sale for $10 and we sold it for $80 plus shipping. Awesome. The thing with the shipping though is that this is going to go to the authenticator. So technically it's like free in a way. So we have to send it via FedEx to the authenticator. Once the authenticator verifies, they send it to the customer. So overall, really cool process that eBay offers for these type of deals where they want to improve the quality of all the things going on in eBay. Really cool program. Really happy with this sale. Just something that we don't often get mainly because we don't often see it at the bins and stuff, but I always know to be on the lookout for sneakers like these. And it's always easy to look up the comps because all the numbers are in there. Easy to find it on eBay. There are a few good comps. So yeah, always nice to get a cool sale like this once in a while. Okay, so these are a pair of pants by the brand Dosa. And this is a really, really nice brand. So you should definitely be on the lookout for this tag. I picked it up. I didn't know anything about it. I thought they just kind of felt nice. That tag looked nice, but I thought, you know, it's probably just a boutique brand, like whatever. When I looked it up, I was so surprised. These pants sold for $90 plus shipping. I was so happy to, you know, find these and sell them. They are such a fun, like almost like summer pants, like they're lightweight um, cotton and they've got this drawstring waist. Really cute, really happy with this sale. I love selling things for close to $100. That is like the best feeling in the world. This is a dress by the brand Anthropology, And this one I have had listed for a really long time. I originally had it listed for 75 and it sold on offer for 50, which I definitely accepted. This is such a cool dress. It was called the La Boheme dress. And so I was able to find that specific style name and so whenever I'm able to do that for an anthropology piece it makes finding comps so much easier because I can look up that exact item and I can find the comps. I do believe that this is an older dress so maybe that's why it took a while to sell but I just think it's so beautiful. I'll pop up a picture on here of the full dress so that you can see really what it looks like. It's a maxi dress so or a midi dress. I bet that is a midi dress. It's like mid calf ankle length so kind of like right in between there depending on like if you're a shorty it's a maxi dress if you're a tall girl it's a mini dress so anyway i thought this is so cute i'm really happy with this sale today has been a really good day kind of turning our week around towards the end what we've got here is a bob allen hunting jacket you can see it by the patches and then this brand bob allen is a pretty good seller it sold for 40 dollars on poshmark so pretty good deal there and it's got these pockets 
for what I imagine is shells and other ammo. If you see it, look it up, you pick it up, mainly because Bob Allen is a pretty well-known brand. It sells pretty well used. So just be on the lookout for something like this as you see it in the thrift store, especially these patches. You can kind of see them in the aisle or kind of across the way. Just make sure you look at it, see if it's worth anything. This is a dress by the brand Zirena. And this is definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. I have seen lots of other resellers talk about this brand. And this is my first time finding it, at least in good condition. I think I found one, but it was like stained or something like that. And this dress is just a gauzy mini dress and it sold for $50 plus shipping. So I am so happy with this sale. Definitely this is a summer dress and I've gotten lots of watchers on this. I've sent out lots of offers. I think I've gotten lowball offers, but I am just really happy with this sale and will look for this brand in the future because I definitely like getting $50 for items. I think that this is kind of one of those trendy sort of brands and, you know, makes high quality stuff. So you'll want to look out for it, but I'm sure that, you know, it's hard to find and that's why it's priced up so much when you're able to sell it. Okay, here we have a dress by the brand Scala and this is a beautiful cocktail dress and I believe that it is vintage. It looks very Y2K to me and this sold for $45 in just a day. I had it listed for 50. I think maybe I could have priced it a little bit higher, gotten a little bit more if I wanted to wait but I was really happy with this sale because I was trying to sell it kind of in time for a prom season. I think this would be such a beautiful prom dress. And it's hard to see like on the camera just how beautiful this is, but in person, like it has just the perfect sheen. It's gorgeous. I cannot believe that someone donated this and I found this in the bins. We've got an MP brand pain management system. So I don't know much about it. I tested it and looked it up, all of that. Seems to be working fine. Sold it on Poshmark for $45. We've had it for a really long time, so we took an offer. You can see that this is pretty old, so it's probably not the latest version or anything like that, but it still works, like I said, and we're happy to get this gone. Should be pretty easy on Poshmark. If anything happens, free returns, no hassle, whatever it is, and then we'll decide after that. But I don't know that this is exactly a bolo or anything. It's just one of those things where when you see it in the bins, you're curious, you look it up, See that's worth something, you pick it up. That's what happened here. And we're happy that we did. We'll take $45. Echo hiking boots. These were the track four hiking boot. And I just picked them up because Echo is a good brand and hiking boots usually are pretty good. So I picked them up and while I was at the bins, I didn't look them up, but when I came home and I found the exact style and everything, it turns out that these are highly valuable. These sold on an offer on Facebook Marketplace for $80. I had them listed originally for $100. These aren't in perfect condition. You know, the soles look really nice, but there definitely is wear on the leather. So I disclosed that in the listing and just something to be on the lookout for. Um, like we always say, you know, within each brand, there are different values for different types of items and some items are more highly valued than others. So you want to make sure that when you're doing your comps and when you're making your listings, you're being as specific as possible so that you can really command the highest price possible. And that's what I did with these boots. I didn't just list them as just regular Echo hiking boots. I found the exact style and that really helped them sell for so much more than I would have originally listed them for. So those are some great sales from the past three weeks. In total in our spreadsheet, we have that we sold 137 items. That includes our garage sale in terms of what we could actually write down fast enough as things are selling, but our gross revenue from those three weeks was $2,617.42. Our cost of goods on what we sold was $283.97. On eBay, we sold 57 items for $855.33. On Poshmark, we sold 29 items for $479.96. And on Facebook Marketplace, we sold five items for $129.26. And at a garage sale, we were able to write down 46 items that we had bought to resell for a net profit of $29.74. So a little bit about that is that that 
you know, includes the cost of goods, but these were things that we have had listed for a really long time. The average amount of time that these items had been listed was over 400 days, so over a year. So these were things that we were pulling to basically donate, redonate, um, and count as a loss. And so we just decided to have this garage sale and we sold a lot of our personal items as well. So in total, how much we made at the garage sale before taking in any of the cost of goods of those items, which you could kind of debate like whether we should or shouldn't because we were gonna kind of count them as a loss anyway, was $290. So morning spent outside, just, it was a really nice day. So yeah. actually it wasn't that bad. So we got to sit and chat with our neighbors, you know, to chat with people as they came up. So overall, we probably will do it once more, maybe not pull quite so many items as we did this time because we have quite a bit to donate now, but oh well. So in total, our net profit from the past week was $1,494.29. So that includes the $29 that we made at the garage sale, but doesn't include any of the money that we made, you know, on items that we didn't mark down or our personal items as well. I think all in all, when we look at the numbers from the garage sale, we really wanted to get like a lot of stuff out of the house. We had made the commitment that we were either going to sell it, send it to thread up or donate it. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is really important to us because that gives us more room to breathe. It just feels good to get rid of those items. And I hope that you see our mentality in just refreshing our store. I know some people will keep things really long tail for clothing and fashion and all that. Sure, it might cycle around. Sure, we might sell it eventually, but we do have a limited amount of space. I know that y'all have probably heard this in the past few weeks. This is all really building up to our main goal of getting better items and not having bad items, right? So the quality of our items on average will be higher if we don't sell these five, $10 items and, and take a loss on some of these as well. So all in all, really good results. It may not look like it based on that number of the net profit, but making $290 from that garage sale is really refreshing because again, a lot of those items were just like, uh, we're probably just gonna get rid of them anyway. So might as well make some money off of them. Yeah, we saw it as basically like a pit stop on the way to, you know, being donated or mm -hmm. having some other way to get rid of them essentially. So to us, it's not that big of a deal because it's kind of like, oh, we just spent a morning and you know, we were gonna get rid of those items anyway. Now let's talk about why you probably clicked on this video, promoted closets on Poshmark. Thank you. So is Poshmark gonna become eBay with promoted listings? We'll have to see. So Poshmark announced that they are beta testing promoted closets. So they have a survey that you can fill out to apply. I think you have to be a Posh Ambassador 2 to apply. We are Posh Ambassador 2 says, so we did apply. We haven't gotten word yet, but I've been looking at some of the news and some of the way that other resellers have been talking about it, some of the things that they've shared. So we just wanna share our thoughts. What we know is basically that you can sign up and that Poshmark will promote your closet, you know, throughout the internet and potentially on Poshmark as well. There have been a couple of conversations about like how it would actually work. Is it going to be, you know, you pay a flat amount per month, sort of like a subscription or like a membership to have your closet promoted and your whole closet is promoted, or if it is individual listings and you can promote those specific listings. And like, if it would work like Facebook where you boost the post and you know, their algorithm decides where it's gonna go and determined on you know how much you pay depends on how much they like push it to people or if it's going to be pay per click so that means that if someone clicks on your listing you pay you know a couple of cents and regardless of whether it sells you pay because they clicked on your listing and looked at it or if it's going to be like ebay's where you pay when that listing sells so currently we use ebay's standard promoted listing on the majority of our items so the way that works is like when the item sells if it is sold because someone clicked on it where it was promoted rather than just in the regular search results you will pay that promoted fee but if they searched for your item and they found it and it was just one of the ones that came up in the search not because it was promoted but because you know your keywords caught that search then you do not have to pay. Even though all of our listings are promoted or the majority of our listings are promoted, not all of them sell 
using that promoted listing. So we only have to pay the fee some of the time. I would guess about 20% of our listings sell with promoted listings. Yeah, we do all of the numbers and we can see when eBay is charging us a promoted listing fee. Mm -hmm. And it's about one in four, maybe one in five. Exactly. And so most of the time, it seems like it's the items that are pre-saturated in the marketplace that we see that our promoted listing has sold versus some of the ones where we have very individualized often we won't put promoted listings on it like if ours is the only one available on mm -hmm. ebay why would we promote it because then it's just like the our promoted listing and then our listing like right under right. the search results so it doesn't really make sense to do that right people are often scrolling through to see prices anyway even if it's promoted mm -hmm. it might not be the best price so if there mm -hmm. are just a few items to compete with then it doesn't really make sense to us to promote mm -hmm. even though there's a possibility that the promoted listings might go towards outside that particular search. So it's a game of chance at that point, but also it's an informed decision. That's the promoted listing standard, and that is what eBay originally had. And recently they came out with promoted listing advanced, and that's a cost per click system. And I believe that that, my inkling is that that is maybe the way that Poshmark promoted closets are going to be, is cost per click. That means that even if it's not selling, if someone is just clicking on your listing and looking at it, you have to pay. You know, I would not do that because I only want to have to pay the fee if I'm going to make the money. We are kind of risk averse in terms of like shelling out money just to, you know, it's sort of like buying a lottery ticket. Like, yes, you could pay and you might win. You know, you can pay this promoted listing or this promoted closet fee and you might win the sale. But in the end, I feel like it's more important to have competitive pricing and to have great photos and you know good keywords and have it described really well. That would be what would make the sale and what would make people click on your listing even beyond it just being promoted. So given all the things that we think it might be, comparing it to Facebook boosted, eBay promoted, whatever it is, mm -hmm. these things are things that we know that it could be. But the fact of the matter is, it's possible that Poshmark will innovate somehow and do some other sort of amalgamation mm -hmm. of all of those things. So really at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, is it going to make a difference? And what difference can that really make? And will it be worth it? So these questions are really important because when we look at eBay, we think, okay, the base amount that we pay in fees plus the promoted listings, which often is two to 5% for us, that is still under 20% a lot of the mm -hmm. time. It is often going to be very competitive with the 20% that Poshmark as a standard will charge per item. And then, you know, all the discounted shipping, whatever mm -hmm. that eats into it as well. So these things are the things that we compare it to. When we think about eBay and how we make decisions on promoted listings, it makes sense to us because that's the price you have to pay to play. So mm -hmm. on eBay, it's gotten very competitive. It's It just makes sense when things are really saturated that you want to try to promote it so that you can get yours sold above others. But on Poshmark, that's a really big question mark because 90, 95% clothing at this point. And so when you have a lot of people selling just clothing, that makes it very difficult to pay to be competitive. So you have to think about eBay and how big it is and how many different items it is. Does it make sense to promote there? To me, yes. But when you scale it down and you think about the size of Poshmark and the things that are being sold, I don't know that we can really justify it. We're really curious as to what it looks like when we mm -hmm. test it, we would definitely give you an update and we'll make mm -hmm. another video. When we think about the comparisons of eBay and Poshmark, honestly, we're not sure why you're not on eBay already if you don't cross list to eBay. The biggest thing is the shipping, right? And we have a great video on how to ship as compared to Poshmark. So you should really check that out if you're really thinking, well, Poshmark is starting to be pay to play and the fees are just too much. We really encourage you to watch that video. Just take a leap of faith into eBay because the platform's bigger, the audience is bigger, there's just a little bit to learn with the shipping. Some people are afraid of scams on eBay. There are scams going on in Poshmark too, so I don't know what that argument is. It's like scams are everywhere. You just have to get over the hump of being a beginner mm -hmm. and then you'll see that eBay truly is better than Poshmark. We show you video after video that our eBay sales are often better and much bigger in mm -hmm. profit 
than Poshmark. So hopefully mm -hmm. that convinces you in terms of our comparison, regardless of what this Poshmark promoted closet is doing. Mm -hmm. We truly think that if you're sick and tired of Poshmark not doing things right, Mm -hmm. you should explore eBay. I think that for us, that's going to come into our decision about whether we use this promoted closets tool is that eBay is our main platform. And so that's where we focus the majority of our attention. And so I'm not sure that, you know, for us, it would be worth it to have this promoted closet on Poshmark because it's just another cost to our business. And is it really gonna, you know, be worth it for us to pay this amount to promote our closet on Poshmark and mm -hmm. promote these listings. And let's say we promote a listing on Poshmark and then it sells on eBay. Like right. we just have essentially wasted that money on Poshmark. So that's kind of where we're coming from in our business. But if you have a little bit of a different business model, if you only sell on Poshmark, it might be a different kind of decision making for you yeah. because it might be more worth it to you. To us, it seems like with this tool and with some of the tools that Poshmark has been coming out with recently, it seems like they are moving more towards bigger closets, toward, you know, partnering with brands, you know, that three people closet and the Levi's closet, you know, things like that, that they are trying to really get more into like the business side of reselling rather than, I felt like in the past Poshmark was really focused on that basic, you know, customer that is selling things out of their closet that they don't wear anymore and really trying to make it sort of good for that person and, you know, really help them try to sell their items. And now I think they're trying to balance that with people who are essentially what they call power sellers, people mm -hmm. who have over a thousand listings and, you know, people who might need more of those business tools. And I feel like this is one of those items because, you know, someone who has a business as a way to do this, you know, promoted closets, they write it on their taxes, you know, as a cost of doing business versus, you know, just someone who has, I don't know, 10 listings of things that they're trying to clear out their closet. They're not going to pay to be a promoted closet. In the end, it's going to help these bigger closets, but I don't know how it's going to affect these smaller closets. So right. we'll have to see how that goes. And, you know, if Poshmark is still really a place that someone could clear out their closet. So what's the verdict? What's our verdict? For the people who solely sell on Poshmark, it probably will make sense, mainly because mm -hmm. you're really trying to push your items above everyone else. One of the patterns that I've seen in the community with regard to people who only sell on Poshmark is that they're really good at what they do on Poshmark and that they sell often really high dollar items. So at that point, it probably does make sense to promote their closet at some rate and, and you know try to mm -hmm. move their items only purely on Poshmark. Our verdict for people who cross list and have multiple platforms in their reselling business, the verdict is probably not. Mainly because the amount of fees that we're paying already just doesn't make sense. The amount of sales and the revenue that we get from Poshmark, we don't really want to eat into it too much if it is going to be a really hefty price to promote. Yeah, so let us know down in the comments, are you part of the beta testing group? That would be so cool if someone was in it and could share their experience. What are your thoughts? Have you heard of this before? What would make you join? What would make you not join? All of that, we'd love to chat with you down there and you know hear your thoughts on this. Oh, and a quick update on our total stock market index experiment. This is how we're doing, not great, still not great. Uh, as a promise to you, we are going to keep updating you and that's how it's going. Mm -hmm. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. We would love to have you as part of our YouTube community. Every so often we do these what's old videos and we'd like to talk about you know what's going on in the reselling world and give our thoughts. So if you enjoyed you know today's video, there are definitely more like it. And if you look back on our channel, we have some others that we've talked about Poshmark and eBay and their updates and things. So if you need inspiration for your business as things are changing on these platforms, definitely give us a follow. Yeah, keep that passion burning, y'all. We're really rooting for you regardless of what's going on in the reselling world. We hope that you are controlling what you can control. We're always hoping that you're doing well. We'll see you later. Bye. We are Posh Ambassador 2's. I don't know if that's the right uh, <laughs> pluralization for that since we, we're we a duo.